As I said earlier, a fossil is the preserved remains of an ancient animal or plant. No, not peach preserves! <laughs> but it can be something left behind by ancient animals like burrows or droppings or, or footprints. These are called trace fossils. Actually, it's not that easy to become a fossil. Or the earth would be littered with old dead stuff like leaves and trees and animals and... Whoa! <laughs> To, to be preserved, it really helps if an animal has hard parts like a skeleton or an exoskeleton. Uh, like this trilobite. <laughs> Trilobites lived on Earth for well over 300 million years. But they were all gone long before the time of the dinosaurs. We still know about them from the fossils they left behind. It takes just the right conditions to become a fossil. That means getting buried very quickly in fine sediments, so the plant or animal remains don't have time to be eaten or to be exposed to the destructive forces of wind, water, and bacteria. Once the organism is buried, there are a number of ways it can be preserved as a fossil. One method of preservation, which is very common, is called mold and cast. Here, a trilobite falls into sediment and is completely covered. Water dissolves the trilobite away, leaving a cavity in the hardening sediment. The walls of this cavity become the mold. Other sediments and minerals fill this cavity and then harden to create a duplicate of the trilobite. So, what's the third tool that's used by paleontologists to help them determine what age they are exploring? Uh-uh. Oh, not even close! Come on, give it one more guess! That's right, the fossils themselves! But not just any fossils. Only special fossils can help paleontologists figure out what age or period they're exploring, and they are called index fossils. Sure! An index fossil has to have three characteristics. First, it has to be easy to identify. Second, it has to be found in many places all over the world. And third, it has to show clear changes in form over a relatively short period of time. There are three main eras that each mark big changes in the kind of life that lived on the Earth. And each era has a big important name! We know the eras begin with the Paleozoic, the dinosaurs lived in the Mesozoic, then finally we see that the Cenozoic continues to this very day. <laughs> Whoa, that was fun. Let's do that again. We know the really old stuff's in the Paleozoic, the dinosaurs fought to the Mesozoic, then lastly we come to the Cenozoic, where humans continue to stay. All the eras have a name. Life on Earth won't be the same. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> there are three basic types of rock. Igneous rock forms as molten magma hardens inside the Earth. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Metamorphic rock is formed from other rocks that are put under heat and pressure inside the Earth. And finally, sedimentary rock, which is formed by the layering of various types of sediment. 